getting the trident back together uh, finally started work on it just been uh, cleaning up the engine cases so there's some of the bits I've already put through the parts washer uh, I took the sludge trap plugs out of the crankshaft and uh, cleaned out all the sludge and we'll put them back in looking at the uh, journals they don't look too bad at all I'm going to mic them up um, and uh, see what they're like but I think I'm just going to put a set of shelves in from the look of it um, there's the engine cylinders they've not been and head they've not been touched yet apart from the fact that I have already uh, had a look at the cylinders and they look in good condition as well so I think it's going to be a fairly straightforward reassembly job um, so these engine parts have already been cleaned once when it was initially stripped down but because it's been sitting there 30 odd years um, in a state of disassembly I thought I'd give them another clean uh, although the sludge, it was a good job I took the sludge traps out because uh, they were all clogged up so I've got going to put the plugs back in or mic up the crank, put the plugs back in and then um, hopefully as long as the crank is in good condition I'll start reassembling the bottom end So just measuring up the crank here, I have been through these once so I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. And um, so I don't know whether you can see that. No, I'm on macro and it won't focus. But it says forty one point. 2.4 uh, which is within the manufacturer specification so measuring the main bearing journals now so that says 48 just under 48.71 which is in spec blown cleaned and blown out all the oil cleaned these crankcases blown out all the oil ways uh, give them a good blast through with compressed air make sure there's no obstructions and uh, here are the main the main bearing caps they're marked T and D um, T for timing side, D for drive side, for the primary chain side. So um, uh, shouldn't don't mix those up. If they're not marked, then mark them in some way before you take them off, uh, because if you mix them up, it's likely that the crank won't turn <coughs> when you tighten it down. Use a bearing shells. Uh, Wipe the inner surface here nice and dry, these surfaces nice and dry, don't want any oil on there before you put the shells in. Um, and then you can start putting the new bearing shells into the case.
just clip in, they've got a little lug on them. You can always tell, incidentally, you can always tell a main bearing shell for any engine because they usually have this annular groove around which transfers the oil from the main from the crankcase to the main bearing and then to the big end bearing. then these shells need to be lubricated before you assemble the, before you assemble the unit up. So there you are, you can see. Incidentally these cutouts go adjacent to each other. Yeah these cutouts or these lugs go adjacent to each other so uh, not not one opposite okay they're adjacent <coughs> i've um <coughs> i've put a light smear of graphogen assembly compound on all of the bearings uh, so uh, that helps to protect it I'm also going to use a drop of oil on the crankshaft as well. <coughs> so, drop a lock tight on the new plug. Screw that in. Don't go mad tightening it up. This one and this is the next one. This one's round here. Just cleaning these threads or wiping these threads with a bit of alcohol just to make sure there's no oil residue on them. Bit more lock tight. And that's that done. So four new lock tabs and four new nuts for the main bearings ready to go on.
So according to the workshop manual, the centre main bearing nuts are 18 foot pounds. So we'll do the drive side, timing side first. Check the crankshaft moves. Again, check the crankshaft moves. Anything nips up at each stage, you know it's the last component that you tightened up. So that just remains for me to um, tie, to uh, pull up these um, lock tabs. So that's great. It's good to see that back in. <laughs> 